Welcome to Shortcuts to Mastery. I'm your host, Maria Henning, and in my universe, life is for growth and time is for bending. So hop in, my friend, buckle up, and let's get into it. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. I'm so excited. This is an episode that I've gotten requests on, actually, and I fulfilled on those requests via posts and then lots of things, lots of feedback came in and then I was really excited to talk about it more. And so now I'm fulfilling the request and diving into it. We are going to talk about how I run my business as a quad right two five emotional manifesting generator with no head, Ajna, ego, or identity center definition. <laughs> so the main mindset that I need you to keep in mind <laughs> is that it's not about trying to change yourself to fit the business. So if you're also a quad right, or you're also emotionally defined, or you're also no logical circuitry, whatever, like the answer is not, I'm not, I'm not about to give you a bunch of tips on like how I change myself to like fit into the structure. No, like the whole mindset is how do you change your business or meld your business to fit you, right? Not the other way around. It's not about you trying to fit your idea of business or your idea of what structure should be or organization or whatever. I have like very little structure in my human design. Lots, you could say, in my astrology, right? With with uh, six planets in Capricorn and all that good stuff, but not a lot in my human design. And so it's not about, I don't, I don't try to change myself. <laughs> I don't. The idea is how can you fit your business to you and not the other way around. So there's a lot of things in the human design system that would say if someone is very structured, uh, there's, you know, or organized or whatever, or, or can at least like have routines. And I have none of those things. So, so the first place that we start, which was the main request that I got from an, a fellow quad right, um, requested, you know, if I could do an episode on how I run my business as a quad right, that's the first place to start. So what is that really quickly? So what it, that is referring to is something called variable in the human design system. They're also called the four transformations. And it's the four arrows that you see on the chart. And they really tell you about how your brain, how your body, how your mind, how your perspective work. And the main sort of thing to know about that here is that the arrow can either point right or it can point left. And if it's pointing left, then whatever transformation you're looking at, whatever variable you're looking at, it means that that person would uh, benefit from having structure, from having, um, you know, maybe more rigid routines or more focus. <laughs> and that, and it's the traditionally associated with like more masculine energy. And it's, you know, it's, it's basically called leftness in the human design system. And then rightness on the other side is more feminine and more unstructured. And whatever area you have a right facing arrow, whatever area that is that you're looking at, you would benefit from being a little bit less structured, a little bit more passive. That's another word uh, to use. Leftness is more active. Rightness is more passive, um, unstructured, flowy, etc. And in all four of the places that I could have an arrow in all the four transformations, they all point to the right. So I am a quad right when it comes to my determination, which is the top left arrow, uh, which is the brain, uh, the brain, the way that my brain is determined to nourish itself. So how I take in information is very passive. I don't take notes when I uh, take courses. I typically play Candy Crush or I walk and I listen or whatever. Um, I do like to take notes, but I, I don't really have to. Um, I take in information very passively. There's no structure to that. Um, my environment, which is the bottom left arrow, also faces right. So I'm more passive. I'm meant to be relaxed in my environment. Um, I am meant to be an observer and not really be observed. And the other thing to say about determination, by the way, is whether I like <laughs> whether I do well with having more structure in my eating schedule or not. And I, and I don't because it points right and so on and so forth and with the rest of the arrows. So I'm very flowy in that way and the way that my body and my mind and my brain like to work. I include two five in this because two fives have innocence motivation. So what motivates me is like 
play and (laughs) seeing things from a bird's eye view perspective and surrendering to the inner child. And it feels very joyful to me, you know, and not so like structure and, you know, whatever. Um, I'm an emotional, uh, you know, authority, which means I have an emotional wave, which means I don't feel the same every day. Um, some days I feel good. Some days I feel bad, but most days I feel all of those things in the same day. And I ride a whole, you know, spectrum of emotions and being that that's my authority. It takes me time to decide on certain things. Um, the bigger, the bigger they are, typically the more time I'm going to need to really fully ride that emotional wave and get all the information that I need. And then the centers that I see that are very, or that could lend themselves to more structure, especially when it comes to like a business perspective, when it comes to being a personal brand, um, are all, are many of the ones that I have, or, or I guess all of them could lend to more structure, but, um, like I don't have, for example, like ego center definition. So I don't have, you know, consistent access to willpower and, you know, uh, using my drive and, and discipline. And so that can, you can see that as unstructured. I don't necessarily choose to see it that way, but uh, a lot of people could, or my identity center, you know, undefined. I don't have a particularly clear sense all the time of who I am and where I'm going. So how do I, you know, run my business with all of these very like flowy things? And if you share any of those placements, please let me know, DM me on Instagram or share this to your stories or something like that and tag me. Um, because there's, they're fun placements and I have a lot of flow in my human design. Uh, what's interesting however, is that I have six planets in Capricorn and I have four extra 10th house placements. And I really thrive off organization and clear, simple processes. I like knowing where everything is, but I wouldn't necessarily equate that to um, having a lot of structure necessarily or having like a self-imposed, like a, I see that as not like a top-down imposed sort of structure. I feel like my top-down way that I live is my human design and the flow and whatever. And then bottom up, I have these, you know, systems or you know, things of organization that really support me in working with my really flowy self. So let's talk about all the things. Uh, so I, what did I just do? Okay. I have my little list pulled up here of things to talk about on the left, which is, which is part of what supports me in structure that I'll talk about forever ago. I posted on threat forever ago. Look at me. I think it was last week. (laughs) Um, I posted on threads on some things that give me structure as a, as a, I call it as a two, five quad, right man, Manifesting January with zero logic circuitry. Forgot to mention that at the top. Zero logic circuitry. Uh, there's also a channel in human design called the channel of rhythm. There's the it includes the gate of fixed rhythm, someone who likes rhythm and routine. I do not have that. I do not wake up at the same time every day. I don't do the same things every day um, at the same time. Like I have zero logic circuitry. I do not have any of the channel of rhythm like my rhythms are very flowy and, de- and they're very different every day. So what gives me structure? How do I create so prolifically? How do I keep everything, you know, organized? These are the things that really support me. So um, I want to start with the sort of, I have a lot to say about one of these topics and I'm going to leave that one for the end. So I'll start with a shorter topic um, for timing and structure. So uh, one of the things that I got another request on is how I use transits um, as a way to give me structure in my business or how I use transits for like launching in my business. I think that was the request. But in case you didn't know, um, I love to use astrological transits to give me timing and structure in my business. So as a root center defined person, I really love a deadline. (laughs) That's really helpful to me. Um, I tend to do things up until like, I I tend to do my best work when I wait up until the last possible second. And I just like use that root pressure to like get it all done. Um, And so when you're a business owner, you don't, you have to create that for yourself. You have to create deadlines for yourself, at least the type of business owner that I am, right? Because you might have a completely different business. But as someone that creates courses or has client sessions, the way that I create that sort of timing and structure, a lot of the time is by having calls scheduled. So if I book a reading, I know that I have to to prep the reading before that call. So, uh, you know, I'll do it the morning of or something like that. Um, Or I'll have calls for my courses. But when do I, (laughs) when do I create the videos for the courses? It also really, I have to make those deadlines for myself. And one of the ways I love to play with uh, using deadlines or timing and structure is using simple astrological transits. So there's three that I look at. I would say the one that I most look at is lunations. So 
where the moon is at. So new moon or full moon in particular is what I'm looking at, those sort of two-week cycles. And so it's really, really simple, honestly. New moon, great time to launch something new, right? Right now we're in a, we're uh, the, at the time of this recording, we're, we're building up to an, a full moon. So we're still in like a new moon building energy. So it's a great time to create something new, to launch something new, um, to drop something new, drop new content, things like that versus full moons are times of release. And then the two weeks after full moon are sort of like that continual releasing, decreasing cycle. And so it's not necessarily a great time to launch something new. Um, it could be a time to close things out, close cycles out. And so just seeing at where, just seeing where we're at in the moon cycle is super helpful. And I definitely have played with tracking my menstrual cycle as well, if that's something that, uh, that you experience, whoever you are listening to this, if you have a menstrual cycle, um, playing with cycle can be really interesting. And, um, I haven't gotten good enough to like, not like by good enough. I just mean, I haven't remembered to look forward ahead of time and be like, when am I, you know, in what part of my cycle, except for a couple of times. And it's been helpful to be like, Ooh, okay, I'm in this part of my cycle or I'm going to be in this part of my cycle. So maybe, you know, when I'm bleeding, I don't want to be, you know, doing tons and tons of like crazy work or whatever. I want to be resting more. So seeing, I mo I mainly equate it to like my energy levels. And so that's also something that, that's been really helpful. And I would put that with the moon cycle and the lunations cause it's, it's, uh, you know, pretty correlated. So, um, so yeah, so lunations are something that really give me some structure in terms of like launches. Um, and then the sun season is really uh, fun too. So right now the sun is in Pisces and it's, we're going, it's going to move into Aries next week. And so, um, seeing what sign the sun is in and what's, what house it's lighting up for me, gives me insights on what to focus on. So like I was saying right now, the sun is currently in Pisces. And for me as an Aquarius rising who uses whole sign houses, it's in my second house of home and belongings. And so what I've been really like focused on is cleaning up the back end of things and organizing personal finances, organize, uh, organizing home systems, things like that. Um, it's been very much like a Taurus, you know, cause second house is ruled by Taurus. Just like, what are my structures? What's my like fixed earth thing that's going to support me. So I've been looking at that this season. And it's also something to think about with the collective. It's like the collective is experiencing this energy right now is experiencing Pisces energy right now. And then we're going to move into Aries soon. So that might inform what I launch, <laughs> um, or what I create, which in this case, what I'm creating or something I'm launching right now is very much related to second house stuff, home belongings, personal finances, personal systems, uh, which is my notion, the templates and mini course, which I'll tell you more about at the end. So, uh, it, it relates. And sometimes like in this case, it happens completely coincidentally. That was not <laughs> on purpose that I decided to launch this at the same time. Um, but that is the energy that I'm experiencing. Um, and so it would make sense that that's what would come through in terms of a program. Um, and then I also last thing to look at like astrological transits, I look at Mercury slash other retrogrades a little bit. I mean, I keep it simple. Um, if we're going into a Mercury retrograde, I'm mindful if I'm like launching or not. I'm looking at my tech, triple checking that. Um, if we uh, are not in some sort of retrograde, then I feel more free to just like launch, put out stuff. Um, and it feels, I, I did feel like earlier this year when all planets went direct, we're about to go into a Mercury retrograde very soon, but all planets have been direct for a while. When they went direct, I felt it. Like I felt the feeling of like, everything's like going forward and like forward motion and blah, blah, blah. And now that we're going into a retrograde, it's going to be a time of like looking back and cleaning things up and making sure, you know, as we reflect, making sure we're, we we're ready to go when it comes time to move forward again. So it's something that I briefly look at. I this year am learning a lot more about astrology and transits. And so I've picked up so much as a passive brain line to natural. Um, but I'm learning so much more at the moment that I have things to say about, um, uh, or that I will have more things to say about in the future. But right now this is sort of how I work with transits in a, in a simple way. So, uh, lunations looking at where the moon is new moon, create something new full moon, maybe not so much sun season. What's the collective energy that everyone's experiencing. And then what house is it lighting up for you? What are you experiencing? And then how many retrogrades are happening versus how many are not happening and seeing, you know, what that's coming and bringing up in your life and in your business. 
So that's number one. Number two, I want to talk about content creation and content creation structure. So something that I am just so clear on as a personal brand type of business owner is that when I am in a consistent flow of content creation, which will determine if I'm in like a hermit cycle or not, according to to my human design, but when I am in a cycle of content creation and moving forward in that way, everything feels better. Everything feels easier because um, our content creation, particularly on Instagram, I'm an Instagram primarily based business. Um, When I'm creating on Instagram and things are going out, it has a direct impact on the rest of my business. Number one, it's a way that I develop my own, you know, uh, thought leadership, which I've talked about on this podcast already. And and again, if I'm creating prolifically on the podcast, also great for developing that thought leadership, creating new ideas. I mean, the launch of the Notion program came from me posting this post that I'm walking you through right now um, and getting responses back. But number two, it's like the more you post, yes, you develop your thought leadership more, but the more you post, the more you grow your business. Um, you get direct feedback from people liking and commenting and whatever, which is great. But the more you grow your following, the more potential clients you have, and the more potential clients you have, the more money you make. And so, creating content if you are a social media based business or social media marketing based business is is so important. And so, for me, having structure around content creation is really, really important because it just feels like such a direct one-to-one correlation of when I feel good creating, my business does better, you know? And that could be a story, whatever. If you're into manifestation, you could totally decouple those two. And I could not be on Instagram for six months and still make the same amount of money. If you could totally choose to install that belief. I'm that to me as a generator type. And for my current experience, it feels it's very clear that the more I create, the better everything goes. So what's my structure for content creation? Um, The uh, number one, I love to have series and I love to have a very specific grid pattern. So let me talk about both of those. So creating content series gives me a lot of structure when it comes to creating consistently. So I love to serialize content so I can keep expanding on that idea instead of always starting from scratch, which can be really hard, especially as a generator, like just starting from a blank page. It's really hard. And I have a lot to say about creating as a generator and have a whole course in mind for like creativity and design and and creating things as a generator. If you're curious about that, let me know, DM me and it, I'll put it more, I'll, I'll increase the priority of all the other ideas that I have. But yeah. Um, so let me give you some examples of different types of series that I make in my content. So number one, uh, the Gene Keys 101 series. That series is me breaking down the Gene Keys in very simple ways. By the way, really sad that Instagram got rid of their guides feature. Like, are you kidding me? (laughs) I had so many beautiful guides that would organize all these series together and the Instagram got rid of it for some strange reason, which is really sad because I would use these guides a lot and reference them a lot for my own content and for other, I would send them to other people. But anyway, the Gene Keys 101 series is my series breaking down the Gene Keys in a really simple way. So, you know, there's a couple podcast episodes on here about the three sequences. I have a post for each of the three sequences, right? And so it's a great, whenever I want to talk about Gene Keys, I can make any type of content, sure. Or I can just go back to the structure and the template that is the Gene Keys 101 series. So it'd be the same type of graphic design, same type of language, same type of voice. Um, You know, it's a bunch of carousels, X, Y, Z, and the color is white. And so it's helpful to have that sort of, those parameters already in place for me to respond to as a generator and create more of that type of content. Another example, the Gates series. So I uh, created a whole series where there was a carousel on each of the 64 gates and gene keys. And I would talk about the human design element. So we talked about the center that it's in, the channel that it's in, what type of channels it projected, is it generated, whatever, um, the name of the human design gate. And then there was a whole page on the gene key. So shadow gift city, the repressive and reactive shadow theme, the victim theme, why are you in that shadow? And then I even talked about the astrology of each of the gates. So the sign that it's in, um, the element that it's in, and the modality. So is it, you know, Taurus, which is fixed earth or whatever. And that series was black. And I, it was 64 pieces of content, right? It was 64, um, you know, gates slash gene keys, 64 carousels 
that lasted me, I think a year and a half or something like that. Cause I would create content in between that time, but it's like, boom, boom, boom. That is 64 pieces of content right there. Like 64 carousels to talk about. Um, I have another series that I recently created called the Gene Keys uh, in Practice series or the Gene Keys IRL series, which is in color, um, where I talk about how I apply the Gene Keys. So it's not like a 101 series for a beginner. It's more uh, in depth talking about uh, my personal embodiment of the Gene Keys XYZ. And I have created so many other types of series in my business, meme series that are on white, um, the uh, human design in the real world series, which is also in white, <laughs> um, lots of different types of types of series. And it's been so helpful because it gives me structure. It gives me parameters, things to respond to as a generator and, um, yeah, just like things to, um, uh, and, and ways that I can create lots of the same type of content and, and sort of batch create, which is really, really nice. And then the other thing, which was actually the recent like breakthrough that actually inspired this entire post and then led to this like podcast is having my feed pattern. <laughs> so um, a lot of people say that, that you don't need like an aesthetic feed or whatever. I agree. Maybe you don't need it, but it's still something that I personally like and I need for myself to create. And so for years I had this checkerboard grid pattern. It was black color black white so I would make a black post then a colored post then a black post and then a white post and it would make this nice checkerboard where it was like black not black black not black and it would make it would just look really nice and because like I just told you I use color to determine what type of content I will create and each series has its own color it was very clear what type of content I needed to create that day which day etc like if it's a black day, well, I'm going to do the Gates series. If it's a white day, then I'm going to do the Gene Keys IRL series. If it's a color day, I'm going to do the, the or rather, sorry, if it's a white day, I'll do the Gene Keys 101 series. And if it's a color day, then I'll do the Gene Keys in real life series. And so it was so easy. And then I stopped doing that because um, like I was in creation courses and things like that. And you know, hearing like, if you get rid of the feed, then you'll feel even more free to create and like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, maybe I do worry about the feed too much. Okay. I'll, I'll stop doing it. And when I stopped doing it, I created less content. I was confused about what to create. My content wasn't as good. <laughs> um, and even when I like, went to create content, I naturally just gravitated back to that checkerboard grid that I love so much. And like a few weeks ago or something like that, I was like, I'm just going to go back. Like, I'm just, I'm going to give myself permission to go back. Like that was working. I didn't need to get rid of it. And what I've done since hasn't worked. And I've just naturally gravitated to a grid anyway. And now it feels so good. And it feels like I can just create so much more clearly. Cause like I said, I have my series, I have my, my vision for what I want it to look like. I can think in advance, which is difficult as a 3420 manifesting generator, who's only here to respond in the now, it can be hard to plan ahead. And so knowing that, well, tomorrow has to be a white day is really helpful. Um, because it just gives me so many content pieces to pull from. So it's so great. Never leaving you checkerboard grid. Absolutely adore you. So grateful. <laughs> that is some of the things that really support me in the structure of content creation. And then one last thing before we get into the really big thing that I really love, and then I'll riff on any other thing that comes up, is my charts. So if I ever have a question about the next steps in my business or what I would be best at, like I've mentioned all throughout this podcast episode, is my charts, right? I, I will return to my gene keys, my human design and my astrology charts because they have the answers right there for me. And I literally interpret this stuff for a living. So obviously I have interpreted it for myself for a living too. Um, you know, a lot of the things that I've mentioned is like, I work with my sacral center. I work with being a generator. I give myself this grid pattern as a parameter for, to give me something to respond to, um, with the series as well. And once I create a good idea, I don't need to recreate new, 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 new good ideas. I can just go back and, and return to that. And it also gives me enough flexibility as an emotionally defined person to feel into what I would want to do that day. I have lots of different options for things I could do. And I'm often changing things up on the fly, but at least I know that there's going to be a certain grid that it's going to fit into, um, or a certain purpose or something like that. So, um, you know, working with my sacral center, working with my emotional center definition, working with my quad, right? Like all of that stuff, you know, like, like I said at the beginning of the episode, it's not about 
trying to shift yourself to fit what you think business should look like or how you think it should go. It's about fitting your business and fitting your systems to you and your chart, right? That is the process of deconditioning through business um, and using business and using creation as an opportunity or a classroom to learn how to be more yourself and be not as conditioned, if that makes sense. But let's talk about the real MVP here. (laughs) The actual thing that gives me so much structure and support in running my business with all of these super flowy, ooey gooey things is my one and only, my one true love forever and ever, Notion. If you've never heard of Notion before, check it out in the link below. But Notion is this incredible task management, calendar, um, you know, writing system that I have used now for years. And I have created the fucking sexiest, most incredible Notion systems uh, because I've literally been using it since the end of 2020. So over three years at this point and have, oh God, I just have like the best stuff in Notion. So Notion will replace your physical planner, your Google Docs, it will replace your task, uh, you know, to-do list apps, it will replace your Trello boards, it will replace all of that. Like, it is absolutely insane. And so what Notion does is it houses everything like my daily tasks, it houses my content calendar, which gives me so much support when I'm creating content and keeping up my grid feed and all of that. It houses the projects I'm working on. So for example, every course I create is a project. And so it shows me, because I put it in there obviously, but it shows me like, um, you know, what what's coming next in the project. And, you know, for example, with the master key, like I'm running, I'm creating so many videos. And so, I, but I already know what those are. And I know what stage they're at in terms of like when they need to be recorded. And I'll explain all of that more in a second. But yeah, every course I create is a project. Everything to do with my podcast creation is also a notion. So right now I'm staring at my notion page of the notes that I took for this episode. And it's just like so gorgeous, which is so great. Oh, onboarding for my team. I'm actually on a Zoom call right now with Nikki, uh, my VA and and dear friend who I'm often on Zoom calls with just co-working and everything for her uh, and everything for every other team member I've ever taken on is also a notion. So managing their tasks, giving them like giving them the onboarding trainings, everything's all in one place. I will explain all this in a second, but yeah, it's like everything's there. So much more. I I jot down all my tasks. I organize them. I spread them out like a buffet, like, and I just, it's great. Like I have everything in Notion. So let me walk you through all the Notion templates I have and how I use them because it's such a huge part of structure in my business, you know? So number one, the first thing that I see when I log into Notion is something called the life dashboard, uh, my life dashboard. And that houses my current focus, which is like a weekly check-in that I do with myself at the start of every week. I check in and see what's my weekly focus, what are the three big things I want to get done this week, etc. It also houses all of my minute tasks. So like record blah, blah, blah episode, uh, move the calls from Zoom to Kajabi in the master key, uh, upload this video, you know, like just all those like minute tasks uh, is are in there with incredible organizational, you know, prowess. It looks incredible. (laughs) Um, And it hosts, and it also has all my big projects, which right now my two big projects that have these like big project Kanban boards are the master key and also the podcast. I have my podcast Kanban board um, laid out there as well. And if you don't know what a Kanban board is, it's just a way to move. Uh, So imagine looking at a piece of paper and then just draw like three columns down it. And the first column on the left is not started. the middle column is in progress and the column on the right is completed. That is a very simple description of a Kanban board. And you would move a task from, you know, those statuses from the left to the right. And ideally you're starting on the left and ending on the right. So for example, with the master key, the Kanban board is, let me actually pull it up so that I have it for you. Um, So the Kanban board starts with, I think just like modules (laughs) and it's like, hundreds of pages in Notion because I have hundreds of modules that I'm going to create, 64 gene keys, uh, the 14 spheres, the 14 pathways, all that good stuff. Then it goes into up next this month. So what am I recording this month? Then into up next this week. 
and then ready to record today and then recorded and then published. And then I also have like a bonus ideas of things that have come up during the program. Uh, I save them there so that whenever I have time, I can go in and record those bonus ideas. And then I have one for like ideas that I like I'm going to scrap for now. Uh, but if I want to use them in the future, they're already, they're there and I didn't like delete them. So that's my Kanban board for the master key that lives in the, uh, life dashboard. And so I have my, this, I have a similar Kanban board for my podcast, which I'll explain later. And then also my journal is there as well at the bottom of the page. So amazing. Love my <laughs> life dashboard. It's so helpful. It's where I write down and brain dump all my tasks and then I organize them into, you know, is it content related? Is it biz admin related? Is it life admin related? Is it related to this product? Is it related to accounting? So it's so great and it organizes all of that stuff, which is amazing. Then I have a master task page and that just shows the tasks. So the difference between the life dashboard and the master task page is that the life dashboard has like just a like a place for me to brain dump those tasks. And it has like a few of those categories after I brain dump to show me. And then it has the weekly focus and then the Kanban boards and my content calendar in there as well versus the master task page is just only the task, only the minute day-to-day task again, split up between their different categories. But if I just want to look at just what do I need to get done, master task page it is. Then I have a biz dashboard or a business dashboard, which is incredible. It houses my content calendar. It houses my launch calendar uh, and it houses the lunations in that in that content calendar and the transits and the sun season and everything like that to give me some structure visually to see what's next and uh, all my content ideas. And the thing about Notion that is amazing is that my list of content ideas is the same thing that turns into my content calendar. It's the exact same database, just filtered and um, uh, viewed in different ways. And so whenever it's time to take an idea to actually execute, it's a very simple step to now take it from a list and actually visualize it on a day that it needs to get done, which is so great. It also has my main content rules at the top of the page because I'm mainly when I'm looking at my biz dashboard, I'm like creating content of some kind. So it's helpful to see what are my main content rules, the things that the content pillars that I lean back on. And it also has a page that I called Money Diaries way back in the day, which tracks all of my income all of my expenses, where it's coming from, where it's going. And it has these gorgeous filtered views that show income and expenses of all time, of every year, of every quarter, of every month and related to products. So that's why I can easily tell you how much the compendium has made or how much I've made with readings or how much I made in 2022 or whatever, because everything's filtered in there already. And I make time to update it with new, uh, you know, product purchases or bookings and things like that. So I can really track my income. And so, and my expenses, I have been, by the way, way better at tracking income than expenses. As you can imagine, it's just way more fun to see all the money you make. Um, but I'm improving my expense tracking as well and using notion to do it. I also have a product and ideas database, which is really helpful. Um, and so for example, that master key Kanban board, it actually lives inside of a page called the master key within my product and ideas database. So I have this whole database with product ideas of things that I want to create. And it has ideas that I've already created, like the compendium or readings on repeat, or um, what's another example, the master key, right? And then it has, uh, and like my other master classes, and then it has uh, product ideas. So for example, my notion template and mini course, which you can get all of these notion templates that I'm talking about in there. Um, and that's been on my list for a while. And now it's actually in progress. So again, moving it from like not started to in progress to, you know, completed or whatever. Um, I have uh, lots of other ideas in there, different types of podcast ideas, new courses. Uh, like I was saying, the branding course, the design course, if that's something that's interesting to you, let me know, give me something to respond to. Um, so all of my product ideas live there. So again, it's so helpful because I can save them when I have those ideas, save them in a place that I know I will know where they are at. And then if I ever get more ideas for that particular product, even if I'm not working on it, I can go in and jot them down and they all get saved in one place. And then when it comes time to execute on those projects, I have the project management system right there, like in the project and ideas dashboard, which is also on my life dashboard. So it's so great. I can see all that stuff easily. It's just absolutely delightful. 
Then I have a podcast page. So my podcast dashboard is fucking sick. And I also have an idea for a podcast course, which would include the podcast template. But if you don't um, if you don't want to learn about my other podcasting tech, but you just want the podcast template, just get the Notion program. But the the podcast Notion is freaking incredible. That's what I'm looking at right now. And it has at the very top, it has my podcast cover art so I can just access it really quickly. It has all the relevant links that I need for myself. So like, um, you know, my, where I host it, um, like Apple and Google and Spotify, like that manager, it has all those links for myself and the links for my guests. So the link for my guests to book a spot on my, uh, you know, to get interviewed on my, on my podcast, it has the link that they get afterwards, which is like a thank you link and all of that. It has my bio. So whenever I get invited on other people's podcasts, I just boop, copy and paste the bio, send it their way. And it has this very in-depth Kanban board to store all of the ideas and information for each podcast episode, which is what I'm looking at right now. So the way that these Kanban boards work inside of Notion is that each um, Kanban board, when you add in an item, it, it's its own page that you can open up, expand, and add in literally as much information as you want. And so all of my, um, and, it, and it's all templatized. I don't have to remake it from scratch every single time. So I have a template for a solo episode and that looks different than uh, an interview episode. And so whenever it comes time that I have a new podcast idea, whether it's solo or whether it's an interview, I just go in, add a new page for in like the ideas column for solo or the ideas column for interview. And then I just click on the template that is either solo show or interview. And then it just populates and it has a section for the podcast idea. It has a section for talking points. It has a section for the show notes, the transcription, the links, like all that kind of stuff. It's freaking incredible. And I'm obsessed with it. And again, if you want my podcast uh, template, just get the Notion program. But if you also want to learn uh, more about my other tech that I use for my podcast, like the mic I'm using right now or the software I'm using right now to record it, how I made my music, all of that. Also, let me know. Give me something to respond to. Which one's more exciting to you right now? Podcast creation or general creation and creativity and da da da. Um, and I also have lots of other Notion things in there. I have a place for my home and living which was so helpful when I lived in Boston uh, because when you live in an apartment building you have like the apartment like renters dashboard and like where you know your utilities and your water and whatever and so I had spaces for all of that so then when it came time for me to leave my apartment you just go in there very quickly and oh this is where I have my utilities this is the gas this is my password boom go in log out done etc really helpful also where I put things I needed to buy for the apartment xyz it was absolutely incredible. I have a notion for trips and travel. So all my travel and it has templates. What are my flight dates? How long am I staying? How much does it cost? Where do I stay? The link to the Airbnb, X, Y, Z, and then things I want to do, like very loose itinerary, but still like things I want to do. What are the dates? And I can see in a calendar format or a gallery format. It's incredible. I also when I do take notes, <laughs> um, I have notions for all of my courses that I take. So even if I don't even if I'm not taking notes, I still will create a Notion page for all of my courses um, so that I can at least have like the link <laughs> to get into the course. Um, and so it also keeps track of like when I have like taken those courses, which has been great. So yeah, I have a notion for all of my or all of my programs and I have a notion for my goals, my yearly goals and like what I'm achieving and you know what I want to yeah, the things that I'm looking at creating this year and next year and it's all like I said templatized and it is just an absolute dream. <laughs> it's literally the best. Um Notion has supported me so much in my business and it's the main thing like I said that gives me that gives me structure because um you know, I think another question to answer about structure, for example, that might be challenging for folks is like knowing like, what do you do next? Right. And if I have a place where, first of all, I have all the tasks that I've ever written down, that can be helpful to be like, well, what do I do next? Okay. Well, these are all these tasks that you have to do. Um, and that would be like more like short-term thinking. Like, what do I do today? Well, 
still on my task list, still on my to-do list is to do this, this, and this. So I can go and do that. Um, and again, I like to, as a generator, use it as like a buffet because then I can see, I can have all of my tasks available to me and then I can see, well, what am I responding to right now? What's giving me energy right now? So that's really nice. Um, but if you're thinking more long-term, well, what do I do next? If you have the freaking astral calendar plus all of your business ideas that you've written down with like good descriptions and, you know, what, where they would fit in X, Y, Z. That's also really helpful <laughs> to see, well, what does make sense right now? Um, what am I feeling into right now? Or again, if you're a generator type, like what am I responding to right now? Like having that sort of like time structure, um, you know, is, is, uh, like thinking like short term, for, but also long term is really helpful and Notion does all of that for me <laughs> because I, again, because I created spaces for it, but like it's all housed in one place, which is great. I don't have to like look at Google Calendar or like Google and then Google Docs, which is separate. And then my fucking whatever app, my to-do list app, like it's all in one place, which is great. But yeah, so like it has all of these all of these ways to support me in all the things that I mentioned, like content creation, product creation, my podcast, my branding, tracking my income, um, everything is in one place, which is so helpful. So if you want all of these templates <laughs> and you want them from the perspective of a social media marketing based business owner, personal brand, service provider, content creator, podcast or whatever, you can get all those templates. I am creating I have created already a Notion template program and mini course. I actually don't have a name for it yet at this at the time of this uh, exact recording, but it'll have a beautiful name, Notion Trustful. I don't know, but if you want all my templates and videos of me implementing it, using it. And if you're also listening live, if you want to join live on calls where we will implement together, you can ask me questions. We'll do some next level, like how do I use this stuff, use cases, going through scenarios, then definitely sign up for this program. Right now at this exact time of release, there's still a few days left for the pre-sale price until it goes up. And then it'll go up a little bit for the actual price, but it might even go up further in the future if I end up adding more to it. So just know that the earlier you get it, the best price that you get. But it's going to have all of these templates that I just described. It's my life dashboard, my business dashboard, my master task page, my product and ideas dashboard, the podcast dashboard, home and living, trips and travel, my journal, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, journal for you, right? <laughs> but the journal, all of that kind of stuff. If you want all those templates, if you want to just have like a fully set up notion empire. That's probably the name I'm going to give it, honestly, Notion Empire, because that's what I keep calling it in my head. But if you want to fully set up Notion Empire, a whole like system and like I would say the word is actually really ecosystem already built out and then with flexibility to change and improve however you need it to, that's what I've created and it's absolutely incredible and I cannot wait to give it to you and you're going to have so much support in terms of implementing it, how to use it, use cases, etc. And then especially if you join live, we can do it together, which is amazing. So go ahead and check out the link below for Notion Empire, whatever the name is, <laughs> and then you can join uh, us live or in the recordings in the future. But yes, last couple things to say about how I run my business as a quad right. So I think something to keep in mind um, is cycles for me. So emotional cycles, um, hermit cycles as a two. Um, I let myself go through cycles of being online and being offline. I have a lot of cyclical energy. <laughs> um, and so I've learned to be more and more okay with the times that I'm not on. So just knowing that I have these cycles is like just hugely important. And being okay with that. And I think the other thing too, again, just to kind of reiterate this point, it's like, it's not about fitting you to the business. It's about fitting the business to fit you. So how can you make a business that works with you being a quad right or you being an emotional authority or whatever, or having sorts of like these sorts of cycles. And for me, the way that I've made it work is I have made it okay that I don't post for a long time. Like that's fine. You know, I've tried to have, you know, social media managers like post for me and repurpose my content and blah, blah, blah. And, it's, and it didn't actually feel that great. I think in the future, I'll definitely be at that place. But right now, while it's still me and a personal brand, I just make it okay that I don't post and that I'm offline. Like, it's all right. I inform, um, I express, I tell people what's going on, like whatever. And it's, and it's okay. You know, um, I find that the more I decondition, the less I am able to do things that I don't want to do. It's very hard to do things I don't want to do, to 
if I don't have the sacral energy for it, if it doesn't feel aligned, it's very difficult. The more I decondition, the more difficult it becomes. And so I just get to lean into that, you know, get to lean into, yep, I am not going to do this thing. So then what, I, what can I do? Um, and yeah, in terms of like other types of structure, like my product structure or whatever, um, you know, I have, I, th- I do think about product suite. I actually have a whole training on product suite and launching called strategy extravaganza, which I'll link below for you as well. Um, uh, it's an incredible course and talks a lot about this kind of structure. It also talks about how I worked with my social media manager at that time, which was great. Really amazing um, team teamwork there and also some notion uh, teasing in there as well, which is great. But um, yeah, like I, I do think about uh, product suite and the types of products that I have. And so that helps me with structure as well. You know, do I have, you know, a big a high ticket course and a low ticket master class. Do I have a high ticket coaching and a low ticket one on one session? Like I do think about that and and how that all relates together. But I let it develop organically, and then I started to fit, fill in the blanks. Or as I create, I just fit it in different places as it seems fit. <laughs> pun intended. But really, what it comes down to for me, like with structure, is I don't try to do the same thing. Every, I don't try to work against my nature. I don't try to do the same thing every day, feel the same way every day, be consistent every day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is not my nature as, you know, an emotionally defined person, an MG, a two line, whatever, like it's just, and someone without gate five or whatever, like I, and, and a quad, right? Like I just, I don't try to do that, that to myself every day. I work with my nature. I look for the sacral joy. I look for what feels good. Um, I really do work with sacral energy. Like I, like if I don't have energy for it, I'm not going to do it. So every day I look at my amazing notion system and what do I have to do and what do I have energy for? Do that. Um, and that really, really supports me as well. So I hope this gave you, this was a very, I felt very hyper, uh, recording this. So I hope that this gave you a lot of, uh, you know, things to think about and, um, you know, tips and support in terms of how to run your business. And if you want the main thing that gives me structure and the main thing that supports me in running my business, the thing I open every day, the thing that I have no less than one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 bookmarks on my bookmarks bar, then sign up at the link below for Notion Empire. And you can still get the pre-sale price if you're listening to this live, live, live. Uh, And I will see you in there and you can get all of these amazing uh, systems and how I use them and how they come together. And yeah, like, and change your fucking life. Seriously, change your life and change your business because it's not just business related. It's also life related and they're fucking incredible. So highly recommend. Would love to see you in there. And if you love this episode, share it, tag me, let me know what you thought. Uh, give me something to respond to for creating a podcast course and a, and like a sacral creation course. If any, either of that is, is, is exciting to you and you want to learn how I run my podcast or how I create from a sacral perspective, which can support you even if you're non-sacral, by the way. Um, then DM me uh, at by Maria Henning on Instagram and let me know. I hope to see you in Notion Empire and give you all of my Notion templates and all the things. And that's it. Okay, cool. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, my friend. Thanks for joining me on another ride aboard the Shortcuts to Mastery spaceship. You can get started on your human design and Gene Keys journey with me today for free by going to mariahenning.com slash chart, which is linked below. If you're a visuals lover, as well as an audiophile, then definitely join the party over on Instagram at bymariahenning for lots of fun and beautiful educational content, and to tag me in the stories with the episodes you listen to so I can repost you. And of course, if you're here, you know it totally rocks for podcasts to receive great ratings, so if you're feeling warm and fuzzy and want to share, I'd be eternally grateful. I can't wait to connect again. Thanks for being here, and until next time, here's to everything going easier, better, and faster than expected.